Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and today I'm talking about estrogen and your thyroid. Today, more than ever, women are suffering with not only a condition called estrogen dominance, but an alarming number of women are also being diagnosed with and suffering with many unresolved thyroid symptoms. And the two of these, estrogen dominance and thyroid disease, are connected in more ways than you can imagine. You see, estrogen dominance has a direct effect on your thyroid levels, and if you're like most of my patients, you may have been put on thyroid medications only to feel worse or to have no change at all. Now, there are reasons for this, and in today's video, I'm gonna be discussing why this happens, how women develop estrogen dominance, I'll talk about the relationship between estrogen dominance and your thyroid. And if you stay with me all the way to the end of this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the strategies on preventing estrogen dominance and some of my favorite supplements that can really help reverse estrogen dominance and minimize the effects of estrogen dominance as well as support your thyroid. Now, if you've never heard of estrogen dominance, estrogen dominance develops when women have insufficient levels of progesterone to counter the effects of estrogen. You see, estrogen dominance shows up in a few different scenarios. Some women can be estrogen dominant because their estrogen levels are just too high. Maybe they're taking hormone replacement therapy, HRT, or maybe they're on birth control pills. This is the classic estrogen dominance where your body is just being bombarded with high levels that your body can't use and get rid of. But another common scenario by which women develop estrogen dominance occurs during perimenopause and menopause, where you may find yourself with either low or low normal estrogen levels, but even lower levels of progesterone. So in this scenario, while your estrogen levels may be normal or low normal, uh, what's happening is your progesterone levels are even lower and they can't counterbalance the levels of estrogen. So this still leaves you in a state of relative estrogen dominance. The symptoms of estrogen dominance and the symptoms of estrogen deficiency can sometimes look very similar. So one thing I want you to be aware about uh, and one thing I wanna caution you over is that you should never, ever, ever let a doctor put you on estrogen replacement without first testing you, regardless of your age or regardless of your symptoms. You wouldn't believe how many women I work with that are menopausal or perimenopausal, and they have all of the symptoms of estrogen deficiency, but they have become overloaded with estrogen simply because their doctor assumed that their estrogen levels were low. And every time they went back to the doctor complaining of symptoms, the doctor just kept increasing their estrogen levels. Now, the thing is, is that not every woman needs estrogen during menopause and perimenopause. And so you should always work with a doctor who's focused on looking at the big picture. So my two recommendations right out of the starting gate here are number one, always get properly tested. And this often requires looking at hormones, not only in blood, but also uh, looking at uh, hormone levels in saliva as well as urine. Number two is if your doctor doesn't recognize estrogen dominance or only wants to run a limited um, panel of hormone testing, find another doctor who will test you correctly. Hormones are not something you want to take lightly because they're very, very powerful. And again, if you're taking hormones, you want to make sure you're also being properly monitored. That's also very important. I see a lot of women come into my office and they've been on hormones for years and years and years and no doctor has ever retested their hormone levels. And of course, now we see their levels skyrocketing. Here's the great thing about estrogen dominance, all right? If you have estrogen dominance, by correcting the estrogen dominance, this can have a profound impact on your thyroid gland and thyroid function. So this is actually really, really good news for those of you who might have been diagnosed with thyroid disease. Maybe you went on thyroid hormone replacement and felt little to no improvement, or maybe you felt worse with thyroid replacement. You see, the more estrogen dominance you become, the more your thyroid shuts down. The more your thyroid shuts down, the more estrogen dominant you become. And so it just becomes this vicious, vicious cycle of each hormone imbalance feeding off the other. Estrogen by its very nature instructs cells to grow. It tells the uterine lining to grow. It tells breast tissue to grow. And it also instructs thyroid cells to grow. So that's important because the thyroid cell growth may explain the correlation in women who have developed thyroid nodules or thyroid cancer. So if you're watching today's video and you've been diagnosed with thyroid nodules or you've been diagnosed with thyroid cancer, I highly recommend that you get your estrogen levels checked in blood, saliva, and urine. And watch the videos that I've done on thyroid nodules. Now I wanna show you something. Like I said earlier, when it comes to estrogen dominance, women of any age really can suffer with this, but estrogen dominance is especially common in women between the ages of 35 and 50, and here's why. If you look at this illustration here, what you're gonna notice is that between the ages of 35 and 50, 
women can have as much as a, as a 35% reduction or a drop in the production of estrogen levels from the ovaries. Now that sounds like a lot, but there's more to this story. At the same time, what you'll notice is that there's a 75% reduction in progesterone. Now it's this gap or this imbalance that's created, which is where many of these symptoms, the typical symptoms and the imbalances of estrogen and progesterone start to show up. You start to see hot flashes, you start to see brain fog, you start to see depression, you start to see anxiety, you start to see weight gain, you start to see vaginal dryness, you start to see a loss of sex drive. This is the same time that women uh, get diagnosed with or within, the, within 10 years of that period of time with osteoporosis or osteopenia. So again, many of those symptoms of estrogen dominance are, are coming and stemming from that, uh, that drop and that, uh, you know, that, that, that uh, differentiation between estrogen and progesterone. But the good news here is that again, when you optimize the balance of these hormones, many of these symptoms easily improve. Now, if you're a woman taking birth control pills or patches or HRT, hormone replacement therapy, I highly recommend that you watch a video I did titled, How the Pill is Wrecking Your Thyroid. In that video, not only do I talk about birth control pill, but I do reference many studies that talk about um, uh, fertility shots, uh, patches, and many of the creams that a lot of women are using, um, you know, as it relates to this estrogen dominance, as well as uh, the pill itself, oral contraceptives. Now, in today's video, I want to introduce you to one more hormone that is really super important, and it may be something that you're not familiar with. It's a hormone that is incredibly uh, important during perimenopause and menopause. And in many respects, it's called the gatekeeper because in, in terms of um, women that are transitioning from uh, menopause and perimenopause, this hormone is incredibly important, right? You see, if you look here, when the ovaries begin to ramp down progesterone production, the body looks to its backup system. And the backup system here are the adrenal glands. These are the hormones that we want to focus in on here, and specifically, the hormone that we want to uh, consider and pay attention to is actually two of them. One of them is called cortisol, and the other one is called DHEA. And again, these are both made by the adrenal glands. Now, let me show you why the adrenal glands are really one of the key players for both thyroid and adrenal function. If you look at this illustration, what you're going to notice is that in, in midlife, there is approximately a 50% reduction of steroid hormones from the adrenal glands and a 50% contribution from the ovaries. But when we get to perimenopause and even menopause, what you're gonna notice is that the ovaries only contribute about 10% of those circulating hormones. And the remainder is coming from the adrenal glands, right? So they're in high demand at 90%. This is again, why supporting your adrenals before you go into menopause is so critical. It can go a long way in preventing many of the problems that can make life miserable for many women that are transitioning. So if, you're, um, if you've already had your adrenals and they're overworked and they're gassed out and they're tired and they're run down, you literally have no backup system for making progesterone. So again, here's why those nasty symptoms of estrogen dominance and thyroid problems begin to rear their ugly head and you begin to experience all those symptoms. Now, I promised you in the beginning of this video that I would share with you some strategies uh, in preventing and reversing estrogen dominance as well as some of the supplements that can really uh, go a long way in, in helping minimize the effects of, of estrogen, excess estrogen, and also help with the breakdown of estrogen, which we call estrogen metabolism. Now keep in mind that minimizing estrogen dominance has to be a multi-pronged approach. It's not about dumping thyroid hormones into a, into a woman's body. It's not about dumping a whole bunch of progesterone into a, a woman's body or dumping any of these other hormones into the body like many bioidentical hormone specialists want you to believe, right? But rather it requires a combination of lifestyle choices, dietary changes, supplements, minimizing chemical exposure, which we call xenoestrogens, supporting the adrenal, supporting the thyroid, and supporting the sex hormones. So let's first talk about diet for just a moment. When it comes to diet, most women are not eating the foods that nourish their liver. And I want you to realize that the liver, especially when it comes to hormones, is a critically important hormone. If you really want to start nourishing your liver and your thyroid, start eating foods that are rich in compounds known as sulforaphanes 
and foods that are rich in indole-3-carbonyl. Now you might be saying, well, what the heck are those kinds of foods, right? So here are some of the foods that um, typically fall in those categories. These are gonna be your cruciferous vegetables or your brassicas. So this is gonna be broccoli, kale, uh, cabbage, cauliflower, bok choy. These are gonna be things like collard greens. These are gonna be things like turnips. These are gonna be things like uh, wasabi. These are gonna be things like bok choy, all right? The next thing you can do to support your hormones is support your gut and liver. The supplements that I think are so important during this phase, uh, especially when it comes to estrogen dominance, are going to include things like milk thistle. These are gonna be things like alpha lipoic acid. They may be uh, things like dim or uh, diindolmethane. They may be things like passion flower and maca and calcium deglucurate. Again, these are all wonderful uh, supplements that can really, really do some great things for a woman in menopause and perimenopause and during estrogen dominant states. Okay. The other thing I want you to realize and make sure that you're doing is you're eating plenty of foods that are high in, in essential fatty acids, especially the omega-3 families. Right? These are going to be things like uh, wild-caught salmon. These are going to be things like flaxseed. These are going to be things like nuts and seeds. Um, the next thing I want you to think about from a lifestyle perspective is, is number one, is exercise. Right? This is so important. Uh, by shedding a few extra pounds, you'd be surprised at how far that goes. And here's why. When you shed those extra pounds, you'll reduce the estrogen load. Estrogen is stored in fat tissue. And the more fat you store, the more estrogen dominant you become. So fat cells in the breast tissue and a belly can also convert uh, androgens, which are male hormones, into estrogen. And this is called aromatization. It's a very, very common problem and reason for estrogen dominance during menopause. Now, so losing some weight is obviously going to be important because again, storage space of estrogens, you're preventing aromatization of that testosterone into estrogen. The best kind of exercise that you can do that kind of helps with all this is high intensity interval training. This can be scaled up and scaled down for anyone. It doesn't matter what age you are. What's important to understand is that it's a scalable exercise. And so what one person finds intense may not be so intense for someone else. So don't be intimidated by the title of high intensity interval training. Number two, and again, there's a couple of videos on my website where you can uh, get some ideas in terms of what high intensity interval training looks like. And you can simply Google on YouTube that as well. The second change that you can make is starting to look at and be aware of the kinds of beauty products that you're using, right? Most of your, your beauty products and personal care products can be major culprits uh, for chemicals that mimic estrogen in your body. These are called xenoestrogens or uh, belong to a broader category of um, hormone disruptors known as endocrine disruptors, right? So the goal here is gonna to be to minimize your, your environmental and your chemical exposure to these chemicals because again, these chemicals mimic estrogen, right? Um, the other thing is choose natural kinds of makeups, soaps, deodorants, lipsticks. Uh, stop using plastic to store your leftover foods. It's easy to switch to glass and wherever possible, stop using the microwave, right? Don't reheat leftovers um, in the microwave, especially if you're using plastic, right? Eliminating these endocrine disruptors will go a long way when it comes to healing, not only your, your, uh, your uh, thyroid gland, but also in reversing this estrogen dominance that we've been talking about. Number three, uh, next thing I recommend is that you avoid any and all forms of birth control pills, patches, and HRT. These hormones wreak havoc on a woman's hormones because a woman's body was never designed to be exposed to these synthetic and unnatural and high levels of hormones that you typically see in HRT and birth control pill and patches, and of course, fertility shots as well. Number four, uh, next is get your stress levels under control. Uh, stress hormones, especially like we talked about earlier, these cortisol levels, uh, these have a profound impact on your thyroid. And there's a lot of different videos that I've done where I talk about the effects of stress, uh, cortisol levels on thyroid function, the effects of stress and cortisol and DHEA on your, your ovaries and your sex hormones. But supporting your adrenal glands here, again, goes a very, very long way. Number five is eat more fiber, right? Uh, aim for at least 25 grams of fiber per day. And again, eating fruits and vegetables and nuts, get that fiber into your body. Fiber will keep... Um, you know, those hormones and keep your bowels uh, from being constipated, right? You want to have good, healthy, regular bowel movements because that's going to help you eliminate waste, including unnecessary estrogen, 
All right. So again, remember, if we have too much estrogen, we tend to be more constipated. So we want to get things moving uh, in the GI system. And that brings us to number six, which is fix your gut. All right. Once the liver metabolizes estrogen, it's time to get rid of it. We have, you know, a woman's body has to get rid of that excess estrogen. And this is going to be done through the liver, uh, through the production of bile, which basically sucks up all the toxins in your body. And if you have good elimination, you're going to be eliminating all those extra toxins as well as those excess estrogens. So again, very important. Uh, most women with estrogen dominance, uh, again, like I said earlier, they do experience constipation. Um, and this is a major problem, right? So again, what's causing the constipation could be an important aspect of your health that might be overlooked as well. Um, some of the things I think about when it comes to um, uh, constipation or really what might be causing that constipation, we might be thinking about a leaky gut. We may be thinking about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We might be thinking about gut dysbiosis. We might be thinking about food sensitivities, right? So again, keep things moving. That's going to be very, very important uh, because again, we're eliminating toxins. Um, again, think about the big picture, right? Sometimes in women, uh, especially with women, uh, as your hormones begin to change, you become more prone to yeast infections, right? Candida, uh, gut overgrowth and gut dysbiosis. This is all tied into that shift and change in hormones. So again, that's part of the big picture. Uh, figuring out and of course treating the underlying cause of these digestive issues is going to be paramount in creating optimal hormonal health. So there you go. Uh, as I wrap up today's video, I, I know I covered a lot of information, but I hope that you'll implement some of these strategies that I discussed today. And if you're struggling with thyroid disease uh, and any of the things we talked about today, not only will help your thyroid, but also help reverse estrogen dominance. If you continue to struggle with thyroid disease or thyroid won't stabilize, I recommend that you get your hormones properly tested. Sometimes this means not only testing uh, in blood work, but again, looking at these hormones through saliva as well as urine. All right, consider the thyroid, consider the adrenals as part of the bigger picture. Too often patients and doctors really jump right to hormone replacement and dumping, again, that estrogen, the progesterone, T3, T4 into the body when they really should be taking a step back and working on many of these underlying root causes that we call the big picture. Well, I hope you liked today's video and that you'll subscribe to today's channel if you found those things that we talked about helpful and that you'll tune in for some of the more upcoming videos that I have planned for you. Till next time, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. Take care.